This time we're going to have a look at some electrical circuits. What an electrical circuit is, how we create an electrical circuit and how we control it. We'll also look at ways of drawing electrical circuits because we have to be able to describe to somebody else how our electrical circuit works. Now, we can't always draw batteries, we can't always draw lights, so we use symbols which represent a battery and a light and a switch and other things. So we'll have a look at some of them as we go through. So let's have a look at this simple electrical circuit and I'll see if I can explain to you how it works. Here we have the components of an electrical circuit in their simplest form. We have a battery and we have a light emitting diode. When you join the light emitting diode to the battery, the circuit is created and work is done in the light. Let's look at the individual components. The battery is a little bit like your rainwater tank. It stores energy in the form of water and when you open a tap you create a circuit which allows the water to run out of the tank. A battery stores energy in the form of electricity. When you create a circuit from one potential to the other, you do work in the form of creating light. The next component in the electrical circuit is the conductors. These are the conductors. They are copper wire, which has a low resistance to electrical flow, and they, their job is to take the charge from the battery, where it is stored, to the light, where it will create work. The next component of an electrical circuit is the insulation. The insulation can be in many forms. In this form, it's in air, and I'll demonstrate what happens if I reduce that air gap to nothing? The resistance in the circuit becomes zero and the light doesn't work. In electrical terms that's known as a short circuit or a short. So the third component is the insulation. The first component is the method of creating a voltage difference which is a battery or a generator. The conductors to move the electricity from the storage point to where it will do some work. And the insulation, which is the thing that keeps the electricity where we want it to be. The fourth component is the thing doing the work. In this case, it is a simple LED. And the next component that is required is a method of control. In this case, the method of control is very simply opening and closing the gap between the conductor and the energy source. Just as a matter of interest, in this case, that is what is called a single pole switch because it's only switching one pole. This is called a double pole switch because it switches both poles. That's just a, a little aside. It doesn't really play much part in it. But every switch in every electrical circuit does exactly that. Your light switches, your power points, right up to a huge contactor on a high voltage motor, 5 megawatt motor, the all it does is breaks the circuit so that the electricity can't flow. Every electrical circuit ever created from the time of the Roman or the Ottoman Empire, whoever it was, put citrus juices in an earthenware jar and put metal in it to create a voltage difference, works in exactly the same way. Right up to your huge power stations, your generators that won't fit in this room, 
to your household, electrical circuits to industry. Every electrical circuit has these components. It has a method of producing a voltage difference, which in this case is a battery. It has a method of control, which in this case is touching the wire to the battery. It has a method of transporting the electricity from the battery to where it's being used. It has insulation of whatever sort to contain the electricity where we want it to be. And it has something that actually does the work. Now, every circuit does exactly the same thing, but in a multitude of different ways. In this situation, we're using direct current, or DC. For the purpose of this demonstration, there is really no difference in how AC and DC work. In more complex circuits, yes, it does make a difference, and the method of switching does vary slightly, but the principles of how it works are exactly the same, and the components in the circuit are exactly the same, and the components are what we are looking at now. The method of producing a voltage difference, the conductors to transport the electricity to where it will be doing the work, the insulation which contains the electricity where we want it, and the bit that does the work. If we were in a, a pneumatic or a water circuit, that would be a pump or a rainwater tank. The conductor would be the hole through the hose. The insulation would be the hose itself, which contains the water where we want it to be. And this would be a sprinkler or something which will dissipate the water where we want it to go. Don't say this old bloke in the TV said that water and electricity are the same. They are not. They are massive differences and the two generally don't mix. But how water behaves and how electricity behaves is very similar in a lot of ways and it can be used to demonstrate the similarities. This is an electrical circuit in the real world. We have something that does the work. We have something to control it. We have conductors to take the electricity from the point of voltage difference to the jug that's doing the work. We have the insulation to contain the electricity where we want it. And in this case, we have a secondary control which we can switch the jug on and off from there or it will turn on and off automatically when the jug boils. Here is another electrical circuit. This is a toaster. It has the same control on off switch. It has something that does the work. It has the conductors that take the electricity from the power source to where it does the work. It has the insulation to contain the electricity where we want it to be. And in this case we have a secondary control where we can turn the toaster on or off at a desired temperature. So there are two different electrical circuits, each with exactly the same components and doing the same work. Here we have two electrical circuits, the jug and the toaster, both plugged in, both turned on, working in a configuration we call parallel. Now we'll go back to the workshop and we'll explain what parallel means.